Today we are bringing you into the heart of Africa. The Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC, and Rwanda are two neighbors haunted by a shared history of violence. Their border, a porous line in the heart of Africa, has become a flashpoint for conflict. Both nations are grappling with internal struggles, but their shared history adds fuel to the fire. The recent escalation of tensions marked by military clashes and accusations has sparked fears of a wider war. The international community watches with bated breath, hoping to avert another humanitarian catastrophe in the region. The DRC, a nation rich in resources but plagued by instability, accuses Rwanda of supporting rebel groups within its borders. Rwanda, still scarred by the horrors of the 1994 genocide, claims it's acting in self-defense against threats from Hutu militias operating in eastern DRC. This complex web of accusations, historical grievances and strategic interests makes the current situation extremely volatile. The world cannot afford to ignore the escalating tensions between these two nations. To understand the current conflict, one must delve into the troubled past shared by the DRC and Rwanda. The Rwandan Genocide of 1994, a horrific event that saw the massacre of nearly a million Tutsis, casts a long shadow over the region. The genocide's aftermath saw a mass exodus of Hutu militias, some of whom were responsible for the atrocities, into eastern DRC. This influx of armed groups destabilized the region and contributed to the outbreak of the First and Second Congo Wars. Rwanda, led by a Tutsi-dominated government after the genocide, has twice invaded the DRC, claiming to be pursuing Hutu militias. These interventions further destabilized the DRC and led to accusations of Rwandan exploitation of Congolese resources. The presence of armed groups, including the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, FDLR, a Hutu militia linked to the genocide, continues to be a source of tension. The DRC accuses Rwanda of supporting the FDLR, a charge Rwanda vehemently denies. This history of violence, mistrust, and accusations makes finding a peaceful resolution to the current crisis extremely challenging. The wounds of the past continue to fester, fueling the cycle of violence and instability. The international community must work to address the root causes of the conflict, including the presence of armed groups and the legacy of the Rwandan genocide, to build lasting peace in the region. In the Recent months have seen a dramatic escalation in tensions between the DRC and Rwanda. Clashes between the Congolese army, known as Fardasi, and the M23 rebel group, which the DRC claims is backed by Rwanda, have intensified. The M23, a predominantly Tutsi group, has made significant territorial gains in eastern DRC, capturing key towns and displacing thousands of civilians. These clashes have been accompanied by a war of words between the two governments, each accusing the other of aggression and supporting armed groups. The DRC has accused Rwanda of directly supporting the M23 with troops and weapons, providing evidence in the form of captured equipment and witness testimonies. Rwanda denies these accusations, claiming that the M23 is an internal Congolese problem and that the DRC government is using the conflict to distract from its own failures. The international community, while not explicitly confirming Rwandan support for the M23, has expressed concern over the evidence presented by the DRC and called for Rwanda to cease any support for armed groups. This escalation of violence and rhetoric has raised fears of a wider regional conflict. Neighboring countries already grappling with their own security challenges are on high alert. The African Union and the international community have called for dialogue and restraint, urging both sides to return to the negotiating table. The situation remains extremely volatile, and the risk of a full-blown war between the DRC and Rwanda cannot be ruled out. The DRC-Rwanda conflict has far-reaching implications that extend beyond their shared border. 
The Great Lakes region already grappling with poverty, instability, and the legacy of past conflicts is particularly vulnerable to the spillover effects of the crisis. The conflict has triggered a massive humanitarian crisis, with millions displaced and in desperate need of assistance. This influx of refugees puts a strain on neighboring countries, some of which are already struggling to provide for their own populations. The involvement of regional and international actors further complicates the situation. Uganda, Burundi, and Angola have all deployed troops to Eastern DRC, ostensibly to combat armed groups. However, their presence also raises concerns about regional power dynamics and the potential for the conflict to escalate. The international community, particularly the United States and European Union, has condemned the violence and imposed sanctions on individuals and entities linked to the M23. However, these measures have so far failed to de-escalate the situation. The conflict also has implications for the exploitation of natural resources in the region. Eastern DRC is rich in minerals including gold, coltan and cobalt which are essential for the production of electronics and other goods. The conflict has fueled the illicit trade in these minerals, enriching armed groups and further destabilizing the region. The international community has called for greater transparency and accountability in the mining sector to address this issue. Section 5. The Human Cost, Suffering and Displacement in the Conflict Zone Behind the political posturing and military maneuvers lies a humanitarian catastrophe of immense proportions. The conflict in Eastern DRC has already claimed countless lives and displaced millions of people. Families have been torn apart, homes destroyed and livelihoods shattered. The human cost of this conflict is immeasurable. The United Nations estimates that over five and a half million people are internally displaced within the DRC, with the majority of them concentrated in the conflict-affected Eastern provinces. These displaced populations face dire conditions lacking access to food, clean water, shelter, and health care. The ongoing violence also restricts the delivery of humanitarian aid, leaving many vulnerable populations without essential assistance. The situation is particularly dire for women and children, who are often the most vulnerable in conflict situations. Section 6. A Web of Interests. Key Players and Their Stakes in the Conflict. The conflict in Eastern DRC is not a simple bilateral affair. It involves a complex web of actors, each with their own interests and agendas. Understanding these actors and their motivations is crucial for finding a lasting peace. At the heart of the conflict are the governments of the DRC and Rwanda. The DRC government, led by President Felix Tshisekedi, aims to end the cycle of violence. However, it faces challenges in building a strong national army. Rwanda, under President Paul Kagame, prioritizes its own security concerns. Rwanda's government has been accused of using the conflict to advance its economic interests. Numerous armed groups operate in eastern DRC, further complicating the situation. The M23 claims to fight for the rights of Congolese Tutsis. The DRC and the international community accuse Rwanda of backing the group. Other armed groups, including the FDLR and ADF, add to the volatile mix. The involvement of regional and international actors adds another layer of complexity. Neighboring countries have deployed troops to Eastern DRC, citing security concerns. Their interventions are often seen through the lens of regional power dynamics. The East African community has also deployed a regional force to stabilize the situation. The international community plays a crucial role in mediating the conflict. The UN peacekeeping mission in the DRC has been present for over two decades. However, it has faced criticism for its perceived ineffectiveness in protecting civilians. Section 7. Paths to Peace or War. Possible Future Scenarios. Predicting the future of the DRC-Rwanda conflict is a fraught exercise, given the complex interplay of actors and interests involved. However, by analyzing current trends and potential flashpoints, we can envision a range of possible scenarios, from a fragile peace to a catastrophic regional war. The most optimistic scenario involves a negotiated settlement that addresses the core grievances of both sides. 
This would require the DRC government to demonstrate a genuine commitment to disarming and demobilizing all armed groups operating within its borders, including the FDLR. Rwanda, in turn, would need to cease any support for the M23 and other armed groups and engage in good-faith dialogue with the DRC government. Such a settlement would require the active involvement and pressure from the international community, particularly the African Union and the UN Security Council. A less optimistic but perhaps more realistic scenario is a continuation of the current stalemate, with sporadic outbreaks of violence and no clear resolution in sight. This would mean continued suffering for the civilian population, further displacement, and a deepening of the humanitarian crisis. The risk of the conflict spilling over into neighboring countries would also remain high. This scenario would likely involve continued international involvement, primarily focused on containing the violence and providing humanitarian assistance. The most pessimistic scenario involves a full-blown regional war, with Rwanda and the DRC engaging in direct military confrontation. This could be triggered by a miscalculation, a cross-border incident, or a breakdown in communication. Such a war would have devastating consequences for the entire region, leading to widespread death and destruction, mass displacement, and a humanitarian catastrophe of unimaginable proportions. It would also likely draw in neighboring countries, further destabilizing the region and making a peaceful resolution even more elusive. Section 8. The Urgency of Diplomacy, Averting a Catastrophe the situation on the DRC-Rwanda border is a powder keg, and the world cannot afford to stand by as it threatens to explode. The human cost of inaction is simply too high. The international community must act decisively and with urgency to avert a catastrophic regional war and alleviate the suffering of millions caught in the crossfire. Diplomacy, backed by credible pressure and consequences, is the only viable path forward. The African Union, the UN Security Council, and key regional and international actors must work in concert to bring the DRC and Rwanda back to the negotiating table. This will require addressing the legitimate security concerns of both sides while upholding the principles of sovereignty, territorial integrity, and respect for human rights. The international community must also address the underlying drivers of conflict in Eastern DRC, including the proliferation of armed groups, the illicit exploitation of natural resources, and the legacy of past violence. This will require a long-term commitment to supporting peace-building initiatives, promoting good governance, and fostering economic development. Be the Change, a call to action for peace and justice. The conflict in Eastern DRC is a crisis with real human consequences. Millions of lives have been shattered by violence and displacement. We can take concrete actions to make a difference. Educate ourselves and others about the conflict. Support organizations providing humanitarian assistance. Demand action from our elected officials. Support businesses that operate ethically in conflict zones. Together, we can help bring an end to the violence and build a better future for Africa and the world. Share, support, get involved. Thank you for watching until next time.